Hello, it's day three of the third international conference on dengue and dengue hemorrhagic fever here in Bangkok, where I'm joined in conversation by Dr. Yun In Kyu of the Armed Forces Research Institute of Medical Sciences in Thailand, or AFRAMS. Dr. Yun, welcome. Thank you. Very nice to be here. Um, could we start by uh, you giving me an idea of the role of AFRAMS in dengue research? Well, AFRAMS has a very long history here in Thailand. Uh, the first dengue hemorrhagic fever outbreak in Thailand occurred in 1958, and AFRAMS was actually founded in 1960. So from the very beginning, AFRAMS was involved in elucidating some of the uh, research uh, within dengue, the dengue field. And what are you currently working on? Well, we're working on many things, and some of the things that we are doing are trying to uh, elucidate the pathophysiology of dengue, and uh, some of the things that we're doing are in conjunction with Children's Hospital. That's the old name of Queen Sirikit National Institute of Child Health. Uh, and we also do some epidemiology studies up in northern Thailand at our field site in Kampeng Pet, Thailand, where we're clarifying some of the epidemiologi epidemiologic patterns of dengue transmission. And what have you found about the patterns? I mean, why, why does dengue behave the way it does? Well, one of the interesting things about dengue is that it seems to be a very local and focal disease. So if you look at, uh, let's say, a 100 square meter area uh, in which there's a dengue uh, patient that uh, has been admitted, for example, to the local hospital, and if you do a, an evaluation of the people around that person, you find that the risk really is very high right next to that person, right, uh, let's say, within 20 to 40 meters. That's where it's very high. Uh, and it becomes much less as you go uh, to 100 meters and 200 meters. What that tells us is that what drives the spread within an area of dengue really is people. People move, uh, and as they move, they tend to spread it to different communities within the local area. And then if you look at the global situation, we think that's one of the drivers of, uh, uh, of uh, why dengue itself has increased so dramatically within the past few years, and that is that human mobility from city to city has increased dramatically with air travel uh, and uh, things of that sort. And how can, how can we deal with, with the migration patterns of dengue? I mean, in Thailand, for instance, dengue has been around, as you say, since the late 1950s, yet it still seems to be a major disease. This year in Bangkok alone, we've seen, I think, a record number of cases. Right. It's a growing pat uh, uh, disease globally. In fact, it's essentially a pandemic a dengue pandemic. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways that we're trying to uh, prevent and manage dengue and the spread of dengue. Uh, there's uh, vector control, there's, there's other things, but what we know is that it's very difficult because of the natural global trends that are occurring, and those trends include increased uh, mobility of people, but also includes increased urbanization, population growth, things like that. And those are, are driving it. So there are major drivers of this uh, increase in dengue. And so what our job is, uh, is to try to figure out why these things are, are happening and try to maybe uh, address them uh, in a global way as, long as, in, as well as in a local way. Uh, if we can, for example, know in advance when there's going to be a large number of dengue cases in a certain area and how that relates to the timing in a different area or in a different country, then we can try to effectively take measures to try to blunt that. Where does Thailand stand in the battle against dengue? Uh, Thailand has always been in the forefront of dengue uh, research. And in fact, back in the early 1960s and in the 70s, uh, and in the 80s, all of the information that came out of dengue research at the uh, hospitals in Thailand and in Bangkok in particular, and in particular at Children's Hospital, for example, those uh, were uh, provided some of the main evidence for uh, determining, uh, for driving some of the management guidelines uh, that are instituted, that were instituted by the WHO, for example. Now, the interest in dengue has now spread uh, quite a bit compared to those earlier years where Thailand really provided most of the information to uh, inform some of those um, uh, management uh, uh, criteria and whatnot. But uh, uh, Thailand has traditionally, from years ago, been really right at the front lines in dengue research. Dr. Yun, thank you very much for joining us today. It's a pleasure.